Hi, today I'm going to provide a quick summary of the journal article from Monster to Martyr, representing Mary Dyer by Anne Miles, which was published in an ANA 2001 edition of Early American Literature. Picking this topic was actually very easy for me. I was born and raised on Terceira Island in the Azores, Portugal. My father was an American GI stationed at Lodges, which is a Portuguese base. My mother was born on Graciosa Island, as were several generations of our family, although we are originally from mainland Portugal and Morocco. I was raised very strict Catholic. I walked on my knees for penance around the cobblestone courtyard, or if I wanted to ask God for a favor. One of my biggest dreams as a child was to be a priest and teach the word of God. I was devastated when I finally understood that I could not, simply because I was a girl. I will tell you straight up that I have felt the Holy Spirit, have had my own revelations and conversations, and trust you, I have no problem speaking to others about God. I think that I have had some kind of understanding of what drove Mary Dyer. When you feel a message so strongly, you just have to share it. As this is a short presentation, I will try my best to make it quick. Let me start by saying that I fully agree with the thesis of this article. Mary Dyer very definitely deserves a place in American literature along Anne Hutchinson. Miles claims that Dyer was an intentional martyr for her faith and merits a place early in early American literature because her history enables us to see and articulate possibilities for the sustained practice of female descent that are nowhere else so clearly evidence, in evidence. On May 21, 1660, Mary Dyer became the only woman executed by the Massachusetts Bay Colony as a Quaker. Dyer's initial claim to fame, as it were, comes from her association with Anne Hutchinson. According to Frances Bremer, whose article, Dissenting Puritans, Anne Hutchinson and Mary Dyer, was a 2018 Historical Journal of Massachusetts's Editor's Choice Selection. Hutchinson's banishment led to the exhumation of a child of Dyer's, which had been stillborn and quietly buried. When dug up and viewed, the stillborn child was found to be severely deformed, and Dyer's enemies saw this as a manifestation of the monstrous opinions that she had embraced. After Hutchinson's banishment in the early 1650s, Dyer returned to England with her husband. It was there that she converted to Quakerism. Although her husband and child returned to the colonies without her, Dyer rejoined her family in Rhode Island in the fall of 1657. When their ship arrived in Boston, Dyer and two fellow missionaries from England were immediately picked up as Quakers, imprisoned, and then banished from Massachusetts. Over the next two years, Dyer stayed true to her Quaker faith and her support of her fellow missionaries. Periodically returning to Massachusetts, even though she was often imprisoned under harsh conditions. In October 1659, the three missionaries were again arrested, tried, and imprisoned. This time they were sentenced to death. All three were led to the scaffold. Dyer calmly watched her two fellow missionaries hang beside her. Just before Dyer was to follow their fate, a last minute reprieve arrived. According to Horatio Rogers, Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of Rhode Island, in his 1896 book, Mary Dyer of Rhode Island, The Quaker Martyr, when she was unbound and the noose removed from her neck, she neither answered nor moved. Although not discussed for long in Miles' article, Dyer wrote an impassioned letter to the court, asserting that it is the will of God for her to continue to return to Massachusetts. In his article, Quieting Mary Dyer, Edward Burrow and Dyer's letter to the Massachusetts General Court, Windsor offers an intriguing view into how Dyer's October 26, 1659 letter to the Massachusetts General Court had been later toned down by the Quakers who determined to quiet her words and reshape her writing for their own purposes. Finally, in May of 1660, Dyer again returned to Massachusetts, where she was arrested, tried, and convicted to hang. After stating that she spoke the words that the Lord had spoken to her and refusing to recant, the Puritan courts of the Massachusetts Bay Colony would have their way. 
Mary Dyer was hung on June 1, 1660. Dyer's writings reveal that she was an intelligent woman who fully committed to her faith. Miles makes an excellent case showing that Dyer was fully aware of the consequences of her actions, words, and writings. In fact, in my opinion, Miles shows that Dyer intentionally became a martyr for her Quaker faith. Furthermore, Miles proves her point that Dyer should have her own place in early American history. Thank you. Peace and blessings.